Hello, it's Ruby, and today I'm going to be sharing some ideas of ways that you can reset your life. Lockdown is long, and I feel like the days can blur into each other, and it can be hard to feel motivated some days. Obviously at the moment we shouldn't feel the pressure to be motivated or productive because it is a really tricky situation and it is okay to have off days and not feel your best every single day and not be getting a hundred million things done. But I also know that this in itself can lead us to almost feel worse when we're not getting things done and we're not feeling that boost of motivation and excitement and it feels like we're in a bit of a rut. I feel like that as well can be quite a hard thing to deal with. Hopefully these things can help to renew your motivation and help you to look at things afresh and in a new way and feel less bogged down by the last few months. So yes, I hope that this video is helpful. So the first thing that I would recommend is setting a routine for yourself. I think the hardest thing about lockdown is there is no real set routine. When you're at school or university or work, you leave the house, you go to university every day, and then when the weekend comes, you don't have classes. And I feel like just having the weekdays and the weekends separate helps us to distinguish one week from the next. But at the moment, that's really hard to do. And so I would really recommend trying to find specific things that you do every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Saturday that help you to just notice when new weeks are coming about. So for example, you might FaceTime the same friends every Wednesday, or you might watch a film with your family every Friday. These single events can help you to find a new routine and recognize time to a greater degree. Leading on from that, I would recommend that you make a new morning and night routine. I have spoken about this so much, but I really think it's good to be mindful of your morning and night routines and make sure that they are helping to set you up for the best day ahead. I've said this before, but I really do believe that a good evening routine allows you to have a good morning routine and a good morning routine allows you to set up the day in the best possible way and make the most of it. So if you wake up early, if you have a really mindful morning routine, if you give yourself that time to recuperate and recharge and get ready for the day without stress, then I usually find that my days are a lot more productive. I feel a lot more motivated. I feel a lot happier. And so really for me, having a good solid morning and night routine is the crux and basis of feeling happy and motivated. Just try out a few different things and also whilst you're at it, see if you can flip, fix your sleep schedule. I know that I definitely have found my sleep schedule shifting into something it has never been before. It was really quite bad a couple weeks ago. I was going to bed at like one in the morning and then waking up at seven or eight, but I was really tired. So I'm starting to try to go to bed a bit earlier and just gradually going to bed earlier so that I can wake up earlier too. Number three, try tracking your time to see where it's going. I have tried using the app A Tracker. I just use the free version. You can use this to log exactly how you're spending your day each day. So for example, when you're eating, you just click it and it starts a stopwatch. And then when you finish eating and you go on to studying, you click the studying one. And at the end of the day, it shows you a pie chart of how you've spent your time. This might just be a good thing to do for a few days to reflect on where your time is going and then set actionable goals about how you want to change that going forwards. Number four, an ideas book. Write in your ideas book, start an ideas book. I promise you that it will help to renew your motivation. I think this is such a great way to reset and renew your motivation. So I write in my ideas book every single day. This is a place where I keep track of goals, ambitions, ideas. Every single morning I read through the list of what I've written already and I also just add random things to it. These are just things that I would love to do at some point and it gets me excited about my future, which I think is so important during lockdown. Um, Number five, write a really long to-do list. Just sit down with a pen and paper. I like to use one of my master to-do lists and just write down everything you need to get done and things that you want to get done and you might want to then use this as a weekly to-do list. You can transfer some of these to your to-do list for today. I think it just helps to get a lot of things off your chest. And sometimes you can have admin tasks, um, ideas up in your mind and you're holding on to them and you keep on worrying about them because you haven't got them done but as soon as you write them down they become easier to tackle I think I think they become more actionable number six take a social media detox I did a social media detox a couple weeks ago and I cannot tell you how beneficial it was for my mental health how much clearer my mind felt I felt more creative I'd never taken a social media break not since I did my GCSEs and uh, came offline for two months. It's just an opportunity for you to be present and just be with yourself as opposed to comparing yourself consistently to other people. Going forward now, I want to take more of these detoxes and I want to spend days completely off social media and when you do the weekly detox or a monthly detox, 
you you want to do that more okay next deep clean your room i feel like when we think of resetting we always think of a good deep clean technically it's still spring as i'm filming this it's the 20th of june so it still can be a spring clean but tomorrow it won't be um change your sheets clean your windowsills and surfaces and open your windows too dust hoover just make your room clean and I always feel so much better when I've cleaned my room. I feel so refreshed when I've cleaned my room and whilst you're at it, tidy your room. I promise you will feel so much better for this afterwards. I love looking around my room after I've tidied and again like when you clean it, it just feels so clear and it feels like you've got something off your mind like instantly this weight lifts and I think you know tidying cleaning your room regularly is so key yeah i just think it's a great way to reset yeah. next kind of leading on from this is to have a declutter so go through your wardrobe maybe uh finally sort out that drawer that you've been meaning to sort out for ages i have been needing to sort this for a very long time whilst you're decluttering also have a digital declutter so i actually recently uh finally went through my emails i wanted to get down to inbox zero so i cleared out emails from all the way back in 2015 i have never done a big email sort out this is something i've been procrastinating for literally five years i had 4,000 unopened emails and spent like half a day doing it but i'm so glad that i did and i feel so renewed and refreshed and i find it so much easier to answer my emails now i don't feel this huge weight when i go into into them so that reset was so so worth it you could also go through your camera roll delete those photos you've been meaning to delete for ages you can label files i love to do that maybe you know like once or twice a month just go through and label all those files that don't have names put things in the trash that you meant to also try reorganizing your room i love to do this especially with my desk maybe once every two months i love to change the pen pots change where i'm keeping my like certain notebooks and things there's something about changing the structure and organization of something which just starts a new page and starts a new leaf and you feel more refreshed and renewed and so if you're wanting to reset i think this is definitely worth doing this is one for all of the bookworms out there. Update your TBR and go through your TBR. So I always take screenshots on Instagram. I'm not sure if I'm the only one. Whenever I scroll past a book that looks really interesting, I take a screenshot, but I don't add it automatically to my Goodreads. So I like to just go through my camera roll and add these to my Goodreads. I also keep notes book recommendations that my friends have given me on my notes pages so I will again transfer those into Goodreads. Also go through your TBR list on Goodreads and see if there are any, there are any books you're actually not that interested in reading anymore because I know that I just add loads of books willy-nilly as I'm researching and some of those books I'm not actually interested in reading anymore so it can be good to just go through those and cull it. Another thing you might want to do to reset is go through the people you follow on social media. If there's anyone that's not, not making you feel motivated, inspired, if there are people that you're constantly comparing yourself to and you feel and you can feel it having a negative effect on your mental health, then unfollow these people. Make sure that you're following people that make you feel happy. And if my content isn't doing that for you, then I would encourage you to unsubscribe. Social media can be such a toxic place and I just think this is so, so necessary. Make a note of the most important people in your life, the friendships and relationships that you want to be prioritizing. Um, I think making a list of these people, not only does it make you feel really grateful, it shows you the relationships that you want to be prioritizing at this point in your life. And I actually think that's a really useful thing to do. Um, it doesn't mean, you know, completely disconnect yourself from other people who aren't on that list, but it just shows you maybe like the 10 people that you really, really care about and uh, that you want to be showing your appreci appreciation for regularly. Also go through this list, maybe if you haven't spoken to some of these people for a while, send them a message, call them, write them a letter. I think that's just a really nice thing to do. Find some new recipes, find some healthy recipes and make a note of these. I love using the Tasty app, bookmark new recipes that I want to try at some point. Having a new catalogue of recipes is always really great when you're looking to reset. Make a new playlist on Spotify. Uh, find the songs that you are really loving to listen to at the moment and put these all into a playlist. I feel like changing this, your standard playlist that you're listening to helps to distinguish two separate stages of life. Yeah, having a new playlist is just quite a nice way to reset. This next one's quite a strange one, but I do think that the clothes that we wear can very much link to 
our personal identity at any one given time. I think, you know, clothes and what we wear can be used to express identity. I'd encourage you to assess your style, go through your wardrobe, sell some items on Depop or donate some items, go through and make a note of some outfits that you want to start wearing more regularly, uh, you know, maybe like your five favourite outfits. Make these outfits that really you think represent your identity and your personal style. Penultimately, set some new habits. I love to use the app Done. This is an app where you can just, you just tick to say that you've completed that habit that you're trying to do every day. And finally, put aside an hour to be proactive. So update your LinkedIn, contact some employers, apply for certain online courses or online internships. Maybe make a list of initiative ideas, things that you can do proactively at school or university. Again, like with the ideas book, this just gets you excited, I think. And it's definitely useful to do. So um, just putting aside an hour for that can be so handy. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed watching it. I hope it was helpful and I hope that you have a productive week.